Hey friends, how are you doing today? I hope you're feeling blessed and staying in God's presence. And if not, I hope you feel uplifted after today's video. If you're new here, welcome to His Princess Christian Community, where we read a chapter of the Bible every day and then discuss it afterwards and in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe. It really helps the channel grow and it opens the door for more people to join our community. And while you're at it, check out the description box. We got a lot of great stuff in there. So today we're reading Deuteronomy chapter 7, but before we get started, I want to say a prayer if you wouldn't mind bowing your heads with me. Dear God, thank you for bringing us together here on His Princess Christian Community. Thank you for opening the door for people to join our community, for connecting us and strengthening our bond. Thank you for opening our eyes, our ears, our hearts, and our minds to your word. Thank you for your wisdom, understanding, and clarity as we seek to interpret your word. And thank you for the courage to apply it to our daily lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, Deuteronomy chapter 7. When the Lord your God brings you into the land you are about to enter and occupy, he will clear away many nations ahead of you. The Hittites, Gerashites, Amorites, Canaanites, Perizzites, Hivites, and Jebusites. These seven nations are greater and more numerous than you. When the Lord your God hands these nations over to you and you conquer them, you must completely destroy them. Make no trees with them. Show them no mercy. You must not intermarry with them. Do not let your daughters and sons marry their sons and daughters, for they will lead your children away from me to worship other gods. Then the anger of the Lord will burn against you, and he will quickly destroy you. This is what you must do. You must break down their pagan altars and shatter their sacred pillars, cut down their ash air poles, and burn their idols. For you are a holy people who belong to the Lord your God. Of all the people on, the, on earth, the Lord your God has chosen you to be his own special treasure. The Lord did not set his heart on you and choose you because you were more numerous than other nations, for you were smallest of all the nations. Rather, it was simply that the Lord loves you, and he was keeping the oath he had sworn to your ancestors. That is why the Lord rescued you with such a strong hand from the, your slavery and from the oppressive hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. Understand, therefore, that the Lord your God is indeed God. He is the faithful God who keeps his covenant for a thousand generations and lavishes his unfailing love on those who love him and obey his commands. But he does not hesitate to punish and destroy those who reject him. Therefore, you must obey all the commands, decrees, and regulations I am giving you today. If you listen to these regulations and faithfully obey them, the Lord your God will keep his covenant of unfailing love with you, as he promised with an oath to your ancestors. He will love you and bless you, and he will give you many children. He will give fertility to your land and to your animals. When you arrive in the land he swore to give your ancestors, you will have large harvests of grain, new wine, and olive oil, and great herds of cattle, sheep, and goats. You will be blessed above all the nations of the earth. None of your men or women will be childless, and all your livestock will bear young. And the Lord will protect you from all sickness. He will not let you suffer from the terrible diseases you knew in Egypt, but he will inflict them on all your enemies. You must destroy all the nations the Lord your God hands over to you. Show them no mercy and do not worship their gods, or they will trap you. Perhaps you will think to yourselves, how can we ever conquer these nations that are so much more powerful than we are? But don't be afraid of them. Just remember what the Lord your God did to Pharaoh and to all the land of Egypt. Remember the great terrors the Lord your God sent against them. You saw it with your own eyes. And remember the miraculous signs and wonders and the strong hand and powerful arm with which he brought, a, he brought you out of Egypt. The Lord your God will use this same power against all the people you fear. And then the Lord your God will send terror to drive out the few survivors still hiding from you. No, do not be afraid of those nations, for the Lord your God is among you, and he is a great and awesome God. The Lord your God will drive those nations out ahead of you little by little. You will not clear them away all at once, otherwise the wild animals would multiply too quickly for you. But the Lord your God will hand them over to you. He will th throw them into complete confusion until they are destroyed. He will put their kings in your power, and you will erase their names from the face of the earth. No one will be able to stand against you, and you will destroy them all. You must burn their idols in fire, and you must not covet the silver or gold that covers them. You must not take it, or it will become a trap to you, for it is, a for it is detestable to the Lord your God. Do not bring any detestable objects into your home, for then you will be destroyed just like them. You must utterly detest such things, for they are set apart for destruction. Amen. 
So what did you think of Deuteronomy chapter 7? I'm interested to hear about it in the comments below. Let me know what your insights or interpretations were on the chapter. Maybe comment your favorite verse or just say hi and let us know that you're part of the community. And if you've been blessed lately, let us know so that we can rejoice with you. And if you need prayer, make sure you're putting that in the comments too so we can pray together as a community. Okay, so Deuteronomy chapter 7 is the privilege of holiness. And it truly is a privilege to um, be set apart as holy by God. It's a privilege to be a child of God. And it's a privilege to be saved by Christ. And we should be acting that way. We should be experiencing the privilege and we should be displaying his holiness for others to see. So it starts off by saying that God's telling them that, hey, this land that you're going into, you know, these people are more numerous than you. They're stronger than you. Um, they're a great big many nation. And he's telling them um, not to be afraid of them. He's saying that um, God didn't choose you because you were so numerous or you were so great. You know, as it comes to me and you, like he didn't choose us because you were perfect or because you did everything right or because, you know, you were the best at what you do. He chose you because he loves you. And I thought that was just, it's simply, he says, it was simply that the Lord loves you. And I think that it's just so beautiful to see that he sacrificed his son to save us just because he loves us. And, and on top, so on top of that, he's saying, you know, I didn't save you because you are such a great, powerful nation. I saved you because I loved you. So now don't marry into these people. You know, I didn't choose them. I chose you. So I think it's so important that we when, when we enter into marriage sometimes you know you become a christian after you've already married but if you're still single and you're looking to marry somebody make sure they're equally yoked with you you don't want to marry somebody who does not believe the same things that you believe somebody that doesn't love god equal or more than you do you want to make sure that you're not it says you must completely destroy them you have to completely cut sin out of your life and you have to um separate yourself from people who don't believe the same things that you do so you don't want to intermarry and have that be a constant sh battle and struggle and temptation to separate yourself from god when you're hanging out with people and when you're surrounded by people who you know don't believe the same things you do then often they're doing things that are opposite what God would like you to do and I mean it's not always like that sometimes it's surface level with some people where you know um, they may not believe in God but they still have a lot of the same morals and values that God does but they technically don't believe in God but then they might not be open to praying when you know at meals or when things happen or when you know things are going they might not be open to giving God the glory for everything you know so these types of things will always cause um, confusion so he's telling us to set ourselves apart destroy all the sin in our lives you know cut ourselves off from sin and um, he says that he lavishes his unfailing love on those who love him and obey his commands but he does not hesitate to punish and destroy those who reject him and I think that is the key verse right there he does not hesitate to punish those while God has mercy if you reject God he will not hesitate to punish you and and to, and to destroy you when you reject God when you reject Jesus you are headed to, to death so then it says um he loves you and he will bless you so by following these commands by being faithful and obeying his command and obeying you know keeping the covenant with him um, it says that you will experience, you know, abundance in your life. You will experience his blessings. He will bless you. And specifically here when he's talking to the Israelites about the land that they're getting ready to occupy, you have to remember that when you're praying to God, remind him of what he did for them. Remind him if why wouldn't he do the same thing for you? You are his ch his child just as much. He sacrificed his son for you just as he as as he brought them the same way he loved them enough to bring them out of Egypt. He sacrificed his son for you. So wouldn't he do the same for you? So when it's saying that he gives them abundance, it says you will be blessed above all the nations. So these are the things that we should be asking God for and we should be receiving from him by following his commands and by, you know, staying obedient to him. It should be nothing for us to be asking God for these same things. It says, and the Lord will protect you from all sickness. 
It says he will not let you suffer from the terrible diseases you knew in Egypt. These are things we should be reminding God of. We should be reminding him of these promises that he gave to the Israelites and say, God, I know that you love me. You know, you have no favorites. You sacrificed your son for me. You are a great and mighty, powerful God. You said that these people, you would protect them from all sickness. So I know that you can do the same for me. I know that you are mighty and you will do the same for me. We have to ask God for those things and we have to receive them in the name of Jesus. And then it says that you must destroy all the nations the Lord your God hands over to you. So in that same instance, not only must we obey God's commands, but we need to destroy all sin in our lives. We need to be constantly seeking the Holy Spirit to help us rid ourselves of sin. And it says that, or they will trap you. So by not ridding yourselves of sin, by not separating yourself from sin, if we end up, you know, mingling with sin and intermarrying with, with, with people who are not on the same path as us, they will trap us. We saw that when, with the Midianite women who, you know, the Israelites started messing with the, the Midianite women and they led them to start worshiping, you know, Baal, 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 Baal. <laughs> and um, so, and that's the same for us. If you start associating with people who don't believe the same things that you do, it'll be easy for you to be manipulated into worshiping other idols and taking time away from God and worshiping things that you, you really shouldn't because they make it seem like it's no big deal because that's just how they live and you may see them and they may be you may see them living normal lives they're not being persecuted you know they're being blessed and they're doing these things and so you may be feeling like it's not that big of a deal you can do it too and then next thing you know <laughs> you've turned from God and you know it that's not that's a very dangerous and slippery slope so it says um how can we ever conquer these nations that are so much more powerful than we are? And sometimes you're looking and you're saying, you know, God, how can I conquer the sin in my life? How can I, you know, let these things go? How can I overcome the persecution in my life? And it says, but don't be afraid of them. Just remember what the Lord your God did to Pharaoh. So whenever those feelings of doubt or worry or stress start to seep in your life, you have to remember all the things that God has done before. And not just remember for yourself, but remember for him. If you recall in previous chapters, they carried the trumpets around where they would blow the trumpets to meet together. They would blow the trumpets to celebrate. They would blow the trumpets in battle. And part of that was just to remind God of the, of you know his relationship with them and I think it's so important that you know through our prayer life we're reminding God of the things that he has done for us when we get scared when we get worried when we're wondering how are we ever going to conquer these things how am I ever going to overcome this challenge in my life or the things that I'm going through we have to remind God of everything that he's brought us through before and say I know you're going to get me through this too do not be afraid uh, you did all of this, not even just for me, but you did it for them. So I know you can do it for me. And then it says, all the miraculous signs, the wonders, the strong and powerful arm with which he brought you out of Egypt. It says, the Lord your God will use the same power against all the people you fear. And I mean, that's, that's amazing. Like God will use the same power he used to bring them out of Egypt, the same power he used to, to part the Red Sea. He will use against all the people that you fear. So everything that you fear, any persecution that you're up against, any challenges, any sin in your life that you need to overcome, you know, God will, God will use his powerful right arm to free you from that fear, to free you from any oppression that you're going through, any um, sin in your life. And it says, the Lord your God will use that same power against all the people you fear. And then the Lord your God will send terror to drive out the few survivors still hiding from you. So anything that's still up against you, God will use that same terror to drive them away. So he will put a roadblock up and they will no longer be able to bother you. Or if they do, you will be unaffected by it. And it says, do not be afraid of those nations for the Lord your God is among you. He is great and an awesome God. So you need to constantly be reminded of that. So the enemy is going to constantly be in your head trying to make you doubt, make you have fear, make you worry about how this great and numerous powerful nation, you know, they said that these people were looked like giants, you know, so it's easy to 
the, for that doubt to creep in and to say, you know, look at how many of them there are. Look at how much, look at what we're up against. How are we ever going to work it out? You know, the enemy's going to always be in your head. And you have to remember that God is great and awesome. He is a great and awesome God. And we just need to remind ourselves of that and remind ourselves of what he has done. And then it says, the Lord your God will drive out these nations ahead of you little by little. And I mentioned this before that, you know, the things in your life, the challenges that you have, a lot of the times God will, you know, you'll be renewed little by little. I mean, some people see miraculous like three or 180 degree change and, um, you know, overnight. But most people, it's little by little that you'll start to see changes in your life because God is going to remove things from your life and he's going to prune you little by little. And that's just so the wild animals don't come and destroy what you have. He has to make sure that you are strong enough to fight, um, you know, and not, you know, change everything all at once. So it says, um, he will throw your enemies into complete confusion. And a lot of the stuff that you're reading, you you might you may see some of it, and some of it may be completely oblivious to you. A lot of the times, we need to just be thanking God for the things that we don't even know about. You know, all the the attacks that He has stopped that you didn't even realize were happening. All the you know things that happened that you didn't even know happened. You know, everything that He's He's kept you unaware of we need to be thanking him for that daily so sometimes you go through the day and you've had a really good day and, you, and you're like man it's been a great day but you you have no idea what God probably stopped or prevented or kept from you from happening or you from going through that day and so we need to be constantly thanking God um, and then it says that it, it's another reminder that we need to not covet um, it says, so it says, you must burn the idols in the fire. And you must not covet the silver, the gold that covers them. So we, we need to make sure that we are not first and foremost coveting money or, um, any other kind of idols. Specifically when I'm reading this, I'm just thinking about money. Um, and it's, and it also it says you must not take it or it will become a trap to you. So be careful that the enemy loves to bribe people. <laughs> he loves to offer money, you know, fame and fortune and, you know, all this stuff to live a sinful life. And that the temptation of money and the love of money has led people down really horrible roads. And I know me included, um, you know, I have been led down horrible roads, you know, thinking about making money or not made tons of mistakes thinking about money and how much money I can make and wanting to have, you know, all these things that, you know, I see on TV and, you know, materialism and consumerism, you know, the enemy will drive you through by money. He'll try to provoke you and tempt you with money. And it says, do not bring any of the detestable objects into your home for then you will be destroyed just like them. You must utterly detest such things. So you need to detest the love of money. You need to really detach yourselves from anything in life. You know, in Matthew, we read about that man who God told to sell everything. And you need to have that kind of mentality. You need to have the kind of mentality that if everything was taken from you, that you would be okay because you have God. And, you know, that's the kind of life that you need to live. You need to be unattached to any of your pos material possessions that you have. It needs to be that that idea of having to have those things needs to be detestable to you. And I know for me, for instance, like, I don't know how I would live without my phone, the GPS, um, being able to drive places and, and find things and looking things up and getting information. You know, I use my phone for that. And and I'm always thinking about like if something happens and I, I'm not able to, you know, not just for one day, you know, I could go without it for a day or two days or even a week if I had to. But, um, you know, if something happened like catastrophic and all the phones were wiped out, I don't know if you um, heard on the news, there was like a phone outage for a little while and, you know, people were going crazy or something. And I was just thinking like if that was forever, you know, like you see on movies, like those dis dystopian movies you know or apocalyptic movies where there is no phone and I'm like man we'd have to learn how to use maps again and and where would I even buy a map do they still sell those <laughs> like those kind of things so you know I definitely still have there's still a lot of things that I have to remind myself that if those things were all taken away that God would 
lead me. He would guide me. I would be okay. I trust that God would send a cloud from the sky to direct me and eventually I'd find my way or, you know, so I would come across somebody that would be kind enough to give me directions. So, you know, we have to really just rely on God and and be willing to um you know, be rid of all those things. And it says, for they are set apart for destruction. You have to realize that everything here on earth is temporary. All of your material possessions, everything that you own is temporary. You will not be taking it with you. It is set apart for destruction. So we just need to be keeping that in mind so the enemy cannot use it to tempt us and to keep us on that path. You know, we hear in Revelations where it talks about how there'll come a time where you can't buy or sell anything without that mark. And again, that is how the enemy is going to use, you know, materialism and possessions to drive people to sin so we have to you know to to say well oh if I, if I don't live this certain way then I can't have all these nice things we have to be real, willing to give that up for God so that's my interpretation of Deuteronomy chapter 7 I'm interested to hear what you have to say about it leave it in the comments below don't forget to like and subscribe and I hope you stay blessed stay in God's presence have a great rest of your day I love you